Hello scrapbookers, I'm Katie Scott and I have a blog called Kiss and Tell Scrapbooking and today I am going to be scraplifting myself. Um, this is a page that appears at the Get It Scrapped uh, blog and the title of the blog post is Ideas for the Scrapbook Page, uh, Ideas for Scrapbook Page Embellishment with Found Objects. So on this page, this is the story of a friend of mine, um, Joan came over and gave me her phone number and so this is the actual post-it note and um, the story behind it was my kids were giving me a hard time saying you don't have any friends you never hang out with your friends I'm like you just don't know <laughs> uh, and so it, it was all about how my friend came over and here's a little um, icon for a phone and um, she's somebody who paddle boards so we can paddle. She just lives right across the bay from us so I can um, paddle board with her and so that was my, so this was my found object in this layout. So what I'm going to do is scrapbook myself and so what you'll need is a 4x6 photo that's in portrait mode and then I have gathered some supplies. Um, I gathered some basic gray pieces. They look like this. Um, I gathered some stickers and since today is Veterans Day I got um, a photograph of my great uncle and um, I've already done the journaling on a couple of journaling spots here. And so my found object is I, I'm a saver of stuff so I found this, um, it was a brochure from Starbucks and it was like the comment code and it just looked kind of retro to me and my aunt has this um, theory about my uncle's job after World War II. She thinks he was like, you know, th there's all sorts of conspiracy theories about like um, special things that, I don't know, the government was doing secret stuff and she thinks he was maybe in on some of the secret stuff that they were up to. Um, I don't know exactly what and who knows. I don't think those records have been released, but he just had, I never knew him, um, but she just, uh, <laughs> she has her theories. So this is the original page. So I wanted a page that was um, a, p a paper that was kind of muted and I found this graph paper and what I'm going to do is cut this down and have the star paper showing through the back. So let me just trim that down. I actually found a trimmer to bring up here to my new scrapbooking space. I, um, I'm used to using a guillotine cutter. So this is a Carl personal paper trimmer. Um, it's a little bit broken and I don't think it completely cuts straight, but it cuts pretty straight. <laughs> but it's not my, like I don't feel super comfortable with it, like my guillotine cutter. Um, I may need to just uh, go ahead and bring that up to my new space, but it's just something I've been kind of putting off. So the first thing I'm going to do is because my original page was, um, it already had a border to it. It looked like a film slide. So now I've got a border around the whole page. Ta-da. So let me just adhere that down because that is one of the things I do in my scrapbooking is I like to stick things down as I go and the reason for that is that if you, what I say, pick it and stick it, then you can, and I almost want to cut some of the back of this out in case I want some of those stars. So <laughs> that's a reason not to pick it and stick it, but... Um, let's just cut some of the back of that out so I do have that option if I want to use some of those stars as embellishments. Um, and so this is just a little trick where you just cut kind of a little square out of the middle of the page. So I'll use my trimmer to get into the middle and then I just use my scissors to get at the rest of it. This is an old KI Memories. Um, paper. I want to say it's probably like 10 years old. <laughs> but it's still like it still looks cool. It looks very you know um, military-ish I think. I um, 
I grew up in Massachusetts, and we always get the day off from, from school on Veterans Day, but I don't, they, don't, they don't do that here in Florida, I don't think. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, they don't. So anyways, I thought I would do a few military pages. One of the things I do to get stories on my family, um, so I've just kind of turned up those edges a little bit to make that look kind of a, so you can just give it a little dimension. I, I could um, ink it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, so what I want to do, and, and what I did to kind of prep this to, to scrap but lift myself was I just took the pictures and then tried to kind of place things where um, I thought they would go. And it's not going to be exactly the same, but I used the, my actual layout uh, almost like a color by numbers. So it's just going to be really easy to put this layout together. So that's going to go there. This is going to kind of go down. Um, this is my found object. Then I've already done some of the journaling. And I've cut this. This was just like a little journaling tag card. So I cut that, and it's going to go kind of behind it, like this, ta-da, and this is going to, so it's not exactly the same, and I think my title is going to actually go in a different place. This journaling card is going to go here, and I am thinking about whether to place these photo corners or not. I'm not sure. This is a copy of a photograph, so like it's, I took a picture of the photo and then printed it. So I'm not using an original photo. So I'm not exactly sure where my... Um, I was thinking about doing kind of like this. And if I do that, this just needs to come over just a tiny bit. There we go. And then I was also thinking about putting a border sticker in here. I have these that I think will coordinate. Um, probably, I think the polka dots would be like too happy happy. Um, maybe this one. It's just a little chevron. This is a fancy pants. I think I'll do that. And that will kind of give just everything a place to B, so I'll know where to put things. And so I'm just going to very simply line that up because I've got the graph, so it can be, and, and this is just a little bit shorter, so I'm just going to cut that just a tiny bit over here. Ta-da. And I know that this is going to go underneath, so in case I want to use some of this, I'm not sure that I will, but just in case I do, I'm just going to cut a little piece of it out, um, and so I can use that if I need it somewhere else, but now I'm still just going to line this up over here, and so I've saved a little bit of that that I know will get covered up. So my next part, the next thing is I'm going to adhere some of the stuff down, and then I will start on the embellishments. So the way that I want things to look over here is kind of like this. Yes. So let's get this part down first, and I'm just going to use some tape. I like double stick tape. I'm not sure if it's completely acid free and all that sort of thing. I'm not too worried about it. I also use adhesive tabs. What I don't use is the ATG guns because honestly I just don't understand. Like I just don't understand them and even more than that, um, I feel like they just run out too quickly and I don't know. I don't feel like I have total control over them. So these are my little 
photo corners, and there are actual photo corners on the on the photo, and I'm sort of covering those up, but I think it's okay. I kind of want to like bring some attention to that photo, and so I have um. I subscribe to Ancestry.com and that's a place where I can get old military records. I can get um, like the exact date of birth on my relatives and it's just really like you'd be amazed at what you can find. You can even find like the muster, the muster charts for the World War II, for your World War II relatives and um, you can see like exactly what date they were in a particular place. Like my grandfather, his brother, um, was stationed. He was in the Navy, and he was stationed in Boston Harbor. And he drove a little like Boston whaler around the harbor, and then he was transferred to Brazil. And I can see exactly when that happened, and also like who his company was. So I'm gonna. Kind of, I'm going to leave a little gap here. Like I have these overlapping. I don't know. I'm not sure I love the, love what I'm doing here. <laughs> I've, uh, I think design wise it has a few problems, but I'm not going to fret about it too much. I'm just going to keep going. So there is a little gap here, but there's um, no gap here. Um, hmm, it seems a little problematic. It seems like this should go underneath, but I'm not going to put it underneath. I'm just going to make it two columns. Like, over in this one, I left some gaps. Okay, <laughs> I'm messing this up really. It's, um, let me just, not exactly what I intended, but... Let's just keep going. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you can even, like I know that if I make margins should be consistent um, and I'm breaking that rule here. Um, the photo corners are kind of tripping me up. I think though I can, I can, Okay, now I'm feeling better about things. So in this layout, there are, there's margins in between. There's like a little margin. There's a little like gap in between all of the elements. Um, and on this layout, not so. So I, what I need to do is keep it consistent. Like I could have deviated from that, but I don't think it would have looked all that great. So... If you can use adhesive in a way that you can fiddle with it just a little bit, that helps. And then this is going to go down here. And I really should line that up. Let's see. Just need something long and straight. Oops, I'm just going to move that over just a tiny bit. Okay, and so the bottom here, which if my aunt sees this, she'll be like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> but um, it says, see, reverse for conspiracy theories. <laughs> so um, I'm going to write a story about, you know, how my uncle is a little bit mysterious. And, and um, how they're, you know, what my aunt's theories were as far as what he did after the war. Like, was he still employed by the government? And I know that there was... Um, there was just apparently a lot that went on, and I don't really watch, I don't really pay attention to all the conspiracy theories, but it is kind of interesting if you have a personal connection to some of those, then, then the history gets kind of interesting. So let's just place this here. I'm not sure if that's going to be covered up or not. And then we have this little bit, and I'm kind of wondering if I, I like this edge, so I'm thinking about maintaining that, but I'm not completely sure. I also like maybe if this is a little bit hidden. Um, hmm. This is a, 
this feels awkward to me. So that's his name. And I was going to place it here. I could also move the whole photo down here. I don't think I like that as well. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. Um, hmm. Okay, I liked the placement of it up here. So let's leave it there. And so this is not going to be exactly the same as my first layout, but it's probably it's kind of sim it's similar. Let's see if we can tuck this under. It's a little awkward, honestly. I think I'm going to need to just trim that off because it's lifting up the photo and I don't think it's adding. And I've already got the ripping going on over here. So I think too much and it just kind of is a little too much. Let's see if we can, I don't think I like that either. I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, this goes over. So maybe, here and oh, I'm not in love with this. But I feel like you don't really need to be. You don't have to like completely think every single layout you make is like the super awesomest thing that ever happened. You know, <laughs> sometimes it can just be. So I'm wondering whether to put that there or not. I don't know. I also have, I have some others. This. I kind of like that because it brings in the red. Um, let's see. It's a little goofy though. So I want the wood grain to be headed up like Maybe it should be. I want the wood grain either to be going straight up and down or straight to the side. And there's a hole in that, so it kind of, it's a little awkward. Then maybe this can go up here. So I'm going to cut this. This also has the wood grain in it. And so one, two, the third one needs to be here so that when we make them all go together, they um, line up. So let's see. This isn't a circle, but it has the red. Let's just see how that looks underneath there. I kind of dig that. I'm just going to cut this one in half. And then maybe I can add some other kind of a, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Best laid plans. Okay, line that up again. I don't think that's lined up correctly. Let's just do this one more time. Okay, actually it was closer than I thought. And so I'm in love with these Jenny Bullen Studio Letters. They're my very favorite lately. I'm going to put that... I don't like that now that I've cut it in half. I really think it does need to stay a circle. Let's cut this thing in half. Oh, this has some stars on it. Okay, it's not the, it's not my favorite thing I've ever made, but I think that works okay right there. And then that's gonna go there. This is going to go up here. Ta da! Let's see. Oops. Just gonna... I do like the wood grain <laughs> to be not on a diagonal. So there we go with the basic structure of the layout. And now I was, um, I think I'm going to put his initials here. So his initials are A. P. 
PC. And see, I have just a little tiny bit of green. I like that. And now I think I want to add some stars. And they have different types of stars. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was I do want to give a little read more. And so I think I'm going to put this. This is um, kind of a take on Blitz Design had a, a paper that looked like that, but I actually made this in Word Perfect. Um, so that just gives the reader a look on the back. Um, but I also have another one of those, so maybe I will might cover up the, I was thinking I might cover up the mouse because there were, I don't think there were mouses in the 50s when he was supposedly, you know, involved in all this con conspiracy theory kind of stuff. It does cover up that green, so now I feel like I need a little green up here but I can probably get that done with something. Maybe there were mouses, I don't know. I'm not really sure when computers were invented. I bet my kid knows. <laughs> He's taking a computer history class. Oops, that definitely needs to go under. Um, and then, let's see, I actually like this. On the top of these letters, I'm noticing that there's this row of stars, black and white stars. And the whole thing is adhesive, so I can use this little bit. Let's see if I can get that in there in some kind of an interesting way. I don't know if I like this here. I'm just not going to linger on it too long. Um, Let's see. Where does this feel like it wants to be? Maybe here. Maybe somewhere in there. And I've got more of this. Like I've got a few more of those sheets, so if I wanted more of the stars, I could definitely find them. Um, I said I wasn't going to say um anymore in my videos. Okay. I don't know. I almost feel like I want to just leave it floating in the world up here. Just linked to nothing. I don't think that, I don't know, I just, that's where it's going to go. I'm not sure why, I just, it's going to be floating in the air like a mystery, like this man is sort of a mystery um, in our family. So, there we go. That connects it. And now I also kind of want to put um, something else here, maybe some of those stars. I was going to put some... Maybe some of these stars. So these I'm going to do what they call fussy cut. And so when I do that type of cutting, um, it's easier to cut them out first. And if you can use your pattern paper as embellishments, it's a great way to save a little bit of money. Because embellishments are awesome, but they're a lot of times like kind of pricey, I think. <laughs> I mean, but then I also feel like I should probably get over that a little bit because I, I tend to spend a lot on patterned paper, and maybe if I bought a little less patterned paper, there would be more money available for embellishments, which... Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Except I really get pulled in by the pattern paper. I just love it. It's so pretty. That's what really um, brought me into just really 
like falling in love with scrapbooking is the pattern paper. <laughs> and so I'm cutting one side of the star. And instead of having you watch all of the, the star cutting here, I'm going to, what's going to happen is I'm going to put star and star. And so I'm going to call it a day with this video, but I will have my finished layouts posted up on my blog, which is a type pad blog. It's called Kiss and Tell Scrapbooking. So thank you for joining me and happy Veterans Day. And I hope that you're inspired to create a layout about someone in your family who was in the military. Um, and also, you know, either use this as your... Um, as your sketch or go back and take a layout that you've already made and use it as your kind of scrapbook by numbers um, to create a layout because once you've done it once you feel it feels so much easier to do it again rather than starting from scratch so if you just take a layout that you've already made that you kind of like um, and make it again it's it's pretty easy uh, if, and if you want to see this layout along with lots of other layouts that incorporate found objects, go to Get It Scrapped, and um, up on their blog today, they have ideas for scrapbook page embellishment with found objects. Um, yeah, and you can find that at Get It Scrapped. Okay, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.